and welcome to the first Champion of the Week podcast. My name is Grey Knight. I'm here with IB Plundering. Say hello, IB Plundering. Hello. I'm also here with Pain Incarnate. Say hello, Pain Incarnate. <laughs> Say hello, Pain Incarnate. <laughs> hey, okay, no, hear me. I'm back on <laughs> He's back. Hello. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> we was bracing for Epic there. The suspense. <laughs> The suspense is killing me. Right, okay, let's just roll with this because we've done it like nine times now. So, righty ho. So today we will be we will be discussing um, Kale, who is a champion. So let's get this show on the road. Who is Kale, guys? Anyone want to start off? I will start off with a bit of lore. In a world far, far away. I'm not joking. That is, you know, it does say that. You know, in a galaxy far, far, far away. You know it's going to be good. If that's not actually how it starts. In a world far away where an ancient war still rages, mm. Kale was a great hero, the strongest of an immortal race committed to destroying evil wherever it could be found. In my probably sock drawer, evil can be plenty found there. <laughs> uh, that for tens of thousands of years, wow. Kale fought, <laughs> fought tirelessly. <laughs> Shut up, Lundy. Kale fought tirelessly <laughs> for her people, wielding her flame sword forged before time itself. She shielded her delicate features beneath her enchanted armor, the sole remaining masterpiece of an extinct race of craftsmen. So some pretty good intense lore at the start there. And there's some basic, basic stats as well. Damage 53.3 at starting base level, plus 3 per level, that's uh, respectable. We've also got health, base health at 418 and plus 93 per level, which is also the only really two that stick out, some good damage per level as well as some good health per level. If I'm correct in saying the damage per level, does that stick start with her passive and also give her ability power per level as well? Or am I wrong? Does that change, oh. um, Ray? Yes, it does. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. I can yeah. hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Here. Right, okay. So that was the introduction. First <laughs> 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 one. Yeah, right. The, hopefully the other ones will go a little bit better than that. Right. What type of champion is Kale? Is she support, mage, or DPS? Uh, I'll pass that one over to you, Ray. All right. Well, um, in my humble opinion... Kale is a hybrid of a support and a, that transitions into a sort of carry in the mid to the late game then when she gets more items going. And why is that in your opinion? Because to the beginning of the game you don't you don't dish out a lot of damage unless you really get that Gwinsy really fast because because you've been uh, you've had a good early game. But in general, you'll be using your heal mainly to keep your allies alive and just sort of sit back. Don't play too aggressively. Uh, once you get to the mid game, when you get a Gwinsu's, when you get either a Death Star Grasp or a Hextech on top of that, then you can really start to put some hurt on. And at that point, you sort of transition into a Mage carry that sort of still sits back, but at the same time can do a lot of damage. And of course, you can blow your ult on your melee carry to keep them alive even longer. Okay, interesting. So that's quite a dynamic role then, starting off as a more support and then having your role change throughout the course of the game. That's quite interesting. Plundy, your thoughts? I think she's really bad. <laughs> Trying to... Uh, well, yeah, but what type she doesn't of do enough. She doesn't do enough damage to be a carry unless she gets completely fed. And she doesn't support enough to be a very good support. Um, so she's... she's just kind of half, half and half, but not good at any of them. Right, so you're saying she doesn't really excel at any particular role, she's more of a sort of half-and-half half hybrid. Yeah, she's a half-and-half half hybrid, but since she got nerfed, she can't do any of them very well. Well, right, okie dokie. Moving on, uh, we've got what team composition is uh, Kale best suited in? Is it like AoE, AOE heavy or glass uh, cannon? So much the AOE heavy thing. Um, it's she fits more in a team where you have some solid melee heroes in front to like as in some solid tanks in front, and then you've got some sort of fairly squishy but um, but uh, really good at doing damage heroes um, carries in general because you've got that KL ult plus a heal. I mean that really helps to keep them alive to let them do what they need to do. 
Right. And Plundy, your opinion? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> bad th- no, well, the bad thing about it is that she doesn't like get health unless you buy health, and then if you buy health, then she doesn't do any damage. Right. If you got so any bad things she can't, to say, so she can't carry because she's too squishy. Unless you buy health, and then if you buy health, she can't carry anyways. But isn't that the same of all melee, uh, all carries that they tend to be rather squishy? Yeah, but this one, like, she's supposed to be a support too. So you you saying so, she needs the the buff hammer? What I'm saying is she needs she needs a team to like carry her. Uh, if you were good. forced to play her, Plundy, she needs what a whole bunch of support team? champions to support her, even though she's supposed to be like a half support champion. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, I'll just give my brief opinion. Uh, Kale loves to hang around ranged carries. Usually ranged carries are weak and prime targets for enemy damage. However, Kale can heal these low HP champions and speed them up as well. Given a recent patch change that slowed ranged carries base, base movement speed, this could make or break in some close calls. She can also make them invulnerable and iron curtain them for a short period of time allowing them to dish out damage with no fear of the enemy for a brief time. And just going back to my previous point about what type of uh, what type of champion Kayla is, because I didn't really kind of summarize, I, I missed mine out. Yeah, she is. Since, and, uh, since they changed her passive, she's pretty much just like a hybrid, but it's hard for her to... She just doesn't have a very clear role, because she doesn't... She's not the greatest at supporting, and she's not the greatest at carrying either. She's just like a... Like a semi, kind of half and half. I do, I do, I yeah, do find that half. interesting. What uh, Ray said about her role being dynamic and changing as the course of the game goes on. But what I've got written down here is that uh, Kel is a support champion designed to keep her teams carrying the game. She does this by a variety of means, mainly with her divine blessing, which heals her ally, ally and increases their movement speed. Her ultimate intervention also causes herself or an ally to become immune to damage for a short duration. Two seconds at level six, and a full three seconds at maximum level. So moving on, I do apologize for like going back there, because I did miss me out. So, in your opinion, is she, hard to, is she a hard champion to pick up and play, Ray? Getting used to. Um, she's very, very squishy in the early game. Uh, much like most mages, but she doesn't have any sort of hard CC. The slow is, if you play carefully, the slow will be enough to get you out of sticky situations. But um, but again, you have to play really, really carefully with her. Um, the ulti, the ulti, the bubble, of course, her signature skill takes a bit of getting used to. But I mean, in general, she's if you can play carefully with her, she's not too hard to learn. I think she's actually tagged as recommended by Riot. She is. That's, uh, you've, you've jumped the gun. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> How's you going to have to cross my line out there? I'm just going <laughs> to delete. Right. And your opinion, Plundy? About what? Again? A- about, um, is she a hard champion to pick up and play? She is, just because she's so squishy and she doesn't do like a certain role really well so I think that she is because Ash is really easy to pick up and play you just right click are you saying she doesn't fit in the current meta game no I'm saying she doesn't fit her she doesn't fit roles very well because she's kind of half at everything so she so you have to you have to play her really well to actually like fit the role so she's well. she's like a jack of all trades but master of none definitely that last part <laughs> right. <laughs> Definitely that last part. Just to uh, <laughs> she is okay to pick up and play, but she's not very good at picking up and playing well. Which right. I guess you know Ash is too, because noobs don't know how to use Ash very well. Okey dokey. But they as can right click pretty easily and still be all right. As mentioned by Ray, he does know this champion fairly well. Um, Kale has a recommended tag given to her by Riot, as well as an easy rating in the difficulty setting of the overview menu. Combined with her price in IP and RP, it is safe to assume Riot intended Kale to be fairly easy to pick up and play champion. So moving on, what play style is Kale? Oh, sorry. Um, one more thing I want to add. I believe that those attributes were from they were from way back in the beta when Kale was actually uh, had a slightly different role and played slightly differently before her before her remake. 
mm-hmm. um, before then, she was actually a fairly easy champion to play and was well deserving of the recommended as well as the easy to master um, attribute. She needs she, updating awesome. then. Yes, she has. The, after the remake, um, she's a little bit more difficult to play, so I'm not sure if it still applies, but um, I suppose that's just a relic of the old days. <laughs> Okay, good points, mate. Thanks for uh, pointing that out. So, we were saying, um, what playstyle is Kale? I know we've sort of covered that a little bit, so I will kind of go over my summary first and then kind of point you in the right direction. Kale cannot jungle effectively. Uh, she is a good lane partner to have because of her heal and ultimate. Therefore, she is best in a dual lane, in my opinion. However, when things go in your favour, you need a friend there with some punch. She can use some reckoning. She can use reckoning and to CC and slow the enemy while she strikes them down with ranged auto attacks, granted from righteous fury. Her passive holy fervor is strangely aggressive in nature for a support champion and grants her a lot of damage if built right. Ray, it's over to you. What, you Ray? what play style <laughs> is Kale? Sorry, build style? What, what play style? So oh. can she jungle? Where, where does she go in the team? Does she go top lane, mid lane, bottom lane? How does she play? Generally, you'd put her as a... Hmm, let's see. This is slightly difficult. You generally put her with a melee champion mm-hmm. because she can, uh, she can turn the flaming sword and harass the enemy pretty well with reckoning and with a burst of reckoning as well as the righteous fury flaming sword then. Mm-hmm. Um, but Kale does does need last hits to really, you know, uh, make the most of her abilities along with the usual, um, sorry, she does need a lot of last hits to get those items so that she can really transition well into the mid game and the late game and become a powerhouse that supports the team while doing a lot of damage. Um, can, she so, ach- can she achieve those last hits in a dual lane, or would you put her in a mid lane? Well, she would, but then she'd be taking it from the melee carry that you need to be protecting, mm. can, which is another part of her like whole hybridness. Like she needs the support, but she's also going to be taking the farm away from the carry. Mm. I think that's you can a put Kel in a lane with a melee tank, and that probably works better because the tank would be very helpful in helping to protect um, Kale in case any sort of ganks come. As mentioned before, Kale's inherent squishiness. Tell me about it. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so... What what ability defines Kale the most, in your opinion? Um, Her ult. Yeah, definitely the bubble. It's the... It's... I mean, at this point, it's... Really, the only thing that makes Kale worth playing, because the rest, the rest of what she can do, other champions can do as well, if not better. So, um, but the ult is really her saving grace here. Yeah, what I've got here is intervention is probably probably the most game changing ability Kale has, and the enemy team oh, yeah. carry will hate you for it. It allows you your allies to escape with very low HP, denying them gold. But, oh. Shall I read that again? I think I will. I'll put on my reading glasses. I liked it the first time. Let's do it again. (laughs) Inspension is probably the most game-changing ability Kale has, and the enemy team carry will hate you for it. It allows your allies to escape with very low HP, denying the enemy team gold and XP. Um, You may not agree with that, guys, but, you know, it's it's my opinion, and I shall put that forward. It is a unique ability. (laughs) Um, That's what we just said. Yeah, it's a unique ability, unique to KO, and it's quite it's quite interesting to use. And when it's used effectively, it does do what it's supposed to do. Um, I've done. I, the, yeah, I, I do want to while we're on that subject. While we're on that, okay. I do want to point out that um, it's also very annoying because in general, you sort of as team fights go, you'll try and focus one person instead of trying to do AO, unless you have you know AOE team composition and all that kind of good jazz. But in general, you'll be focusing you know. Uh, high priority targets, uh, carries or squishies. So you don't sort of dish out damage to everyone. You try and focus down one or two heroes. And Kale really turns that around by making that hero invulnerable for that extra three seconds. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say it didn't help right here. That, that, that guy's still dead. <laughs> <laughs> just, 
Right, okay, so what is the best build for Kale? Uh, straight AP, Aurora items, um, are her recommended items, are they the right ones to go? Hybrid items are probably the best, just like Rage Blade. You know, Rage Blade, I think, is a must on her. What, from the start, first item? Um, well, from the start, yeah, for the start you rush uh, Gwinsu's Rage Blade, that's pretty much the core item and, and there's nothing wrong with that um, afterwards it's a little bit down to personal preference um, Deathfire Grasp, Hectech Gunblade or Rylize are all good choices as a next item uh, I personally prefer Hectech Gunblade just because it gives you an extra nuke mm -hmm. while also increasing the your damage and AP but you also yeah, get it's also a hybrid you also, item you, you, you already have hand spell them Sorry, um, no, I was going to say that well, you already have a slow, so what would you invest money into uh, an item that gives you another slow? Because it gives you another slow, <coughs> so you can slow two times. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, <laughs> so I was just asking because the passive, uh, if I'm not wrong, um, the more AP you have, the more damage you do, the more damage you have, the more AP you're going to get, so... Do you, do you go AP items by the sound of your list? It was sort of like hybrid. It wasn't focused one way or the other. Over to okay. you, Ray. <laughs> Ray? I think he's just... Uh, His mic died again. again. Resuscitate that mic. Give it mouth to mouth. Or mouth oh, to does. mic. I think that's the problem with it. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. Sorry about that. Say that again. Um, I was just saying about Chaos passive, um, the more AP you stack, the more damage you yep. get, the more damage you stack, oh, the, the more AP you get. So yes, I indeed. noticed by your items that you said you went for a more hybrid rather than just focusing on one and getting the benefit of the other. <clears throat> yes, indeed. The hybrid sort of, it, because it gives you the double benefit, one makes the other go up and that makes the first one go up and so on and so forth. Um, also, because also um, you're going to be doing a lot of uh, flaming sword damage, and that the damage is um, uh, that is your auto attack damage. So you need you need you're not only doing magic damage, you're also because of your flaming sword, you're doing auto attack damage. So you need some auto attack damage for that as well. So as in before her remake, for those of you who played in the beta before season one and so on. Uh, you you could go you could get away with going full AP, just going straight for Zonya's ring, which no longer exists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, yeah, raw pages, so just full AP, and that would be how she would play because you'd mainly do your damage from reckoning, and that would just be a large amount of burst. Um, at this point now, you kind of you start with a reckoning blast, and then you sort of sit back and wail away at them with your flaming sword. So you kind of need AP and um, attack damage items, and therefore hybrid items are really the best best bet for her. But she's still squishy that way, because you're just getting all these like hybrid items, which don't come with health. So yeah. she's still really squishy. Well, oh. um, her, um, her Righteous Fury, does that make her auto attacks deal magic damage? Am I right in saying that? Uh, I believe... Uh, no. Oh. It makes makes you do like AOE damage around. Flashes magic damage. Does yeah, that magic. proc the Rylai scepter? Uh, yes, indeed it does. Rylai. But it'll be an AOE, so it's only fifteen percent. But yeah. it's still a AOE slow, given her HP that she needs. That'd be maybe yeah, a useful she item. Just get frozen. Yes, Rylai is a is a decent item on KO. Um, mm. No doubt about that. So um, it's just gonna. Um, pass over to Plundy now. Um, what about in terms of Aurora items? Because she is a support champion. What are your thoughts on getting her with some Aurora? Items? I think playing her support is really bad. So yeah. I don't ever get those items on her. <laughs> <laughs> I think Deathfire Grasp, Grasp is a bad item for her right now. That's all I'm going to say. Um, Aurora items aren't. I wouldn't say aren't. I would say aren't as good because. Um, <laughs> Because, I mean, you're not doing anything. Cause because yeah. why would you say that? As a champion, if you get aura <laughs> items on Kale, you, um, 
What is it? I mean, it's the equivalent to like a Soraka or Tarek. They don't really do anything no, but look they after have, they their They have aura like passives. Yeah, they, they have, have yeah, they have an aura passive, but that you, there's nothing stopping a like Kale from getting Aegis of the Legion and getting some an aura from that, and then just looking after the carry and just increasing master use yeah, movement speed and healing him. Making she sure is not well. a very good support. Like the only thing she has is a is an okay heal. It's not even like amazing of a heal. Well, who who Unless is a, a good lot of support AP? in the minute? No one's that good in recently that nerfed. Ale heal is actually not. Is really not that bad. I mean, it's not as good as Soraka's. No, it's the reason it was good is because it gave you all that. It gave you all that movement speed, and that got nerfed. And uh, it doesn't heal near as much as Soraka's. Yeah, well, I mean, Soraka's all about healing, so you know she's in a category. She's almost in the category. Yeah, that's why she's a good support. And sure, you have your old, but your old doesn't. I'd, uh, I'd isn't that great? KO and you're over. not. A, you're not a very good mule. Okay. Like, to put support items on, she's just. I don't, I don't like playing her as a support. I was just uh, putting it out there to see what your guys' opinions were. What is she good as a as like a damage dealer that can also like support a little bit with her ult and everything? Mm -hmm. But she's not like you okay. begin. That's what I'm saying. You begin the early game as a support by using primarily your heal. You know that's why. Stealing your carries farm. Um, <laughs> keep going. No, well, keep going. <laughs> you said yourself, Kale is a damage dealer, so you're gonna have to get damage out on. I, I think Until no, yeah, the remake made her into a carry, yeah, and then right. they nerfed her, and now she's not a carry or a support. Not getting too little... tied down, guys. Let's move on. What effect <laughs> has the recent patch made on Kale in regard to the death cap? Uh, Ray, oh, we'll start I'll start off you. I haven't got death cap on her, um, so I don't get depressed and slip my wrist. Sense, but at the same time, it creates this opportunity cost because you know you're you're either gonna rush or sort of after your Gwinsu is a of course, you're eating. Um, I, for instance, I try and go for a hexa gunblade as fast as possible as the next item, and then if the game keeps going, I'll probably get a rallies just for that extra health boost. And death, uh, the death cap, while it is very, very powerful, it's just not. It's it's another opportunity cost. You either get that or you get your rallies, or you either get that or you get your hex tech. So mm -hmm. I mean, it's. In a way, it again ties back that to this whole sort of Kale is a very flexible champion, but master of none. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, no, after her remake, she was good. I liked her after her remake because she was into Yay. a carry, and she could do some pretty awesome stuff. But then they nerfed her, and now she doesn't do anything well. Oh, oh. right. Okay. So the death cap, in your opinion, though, did it was it a buff to Kale? Was it not death cap? It's not. No, I don't know why Kale would really get death cap. It's like she's not just a straight AP builder. Like, but it is I mean, I'm probably... trying it right now, and I'm telling you what, it's not working out very well. Yeah, <laughs> I was just, I was just gonna well. say you've just you've just played with Kale, and you was gonna build. No, I'm playing it right cap. now, and uh, I'm going uh, Deathfire and AP more, just so mm -hmm. Deathfire would do more, and just going straight AP on her. She's just missing out on like her. She's just not getting as much as she would if she if I got like a Rage Blade or like a Hex Tech. It, you know. Okay, okay. So straight uh, AP isn't good on her, and straight damage wouldn't be good because then your heals would do nothing. It, so I think it, she needs to be built as a hybrid so that she can do her half jobs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know. Right. Okay. Yeah. No. Valid point. Valid point. I was, I would, I would say it's a buff. Um, in, because it works well with her passive, so it's a good item, I would say. Maybe not the first item to go for, like you were saying, she needs a Rage Blade. I think it's a good item because it gives a lot of AP and therefore gives a lot of attack damage as well, um, which, you know, other carries just get the AP kind of section from that. Yeah, Kale benefits from getting a lot of attack damage as well, so I think that's a very useful item on Kale. Um, to summarise, the only kind of Orange. I've got, I've got the summary in orange, and all I've got there is just mage cock. So you know, <laughs> from that where you were. <laughs> I think you have some messed up uh, summaries. Okay, so are there any advanced tricks you use with kale? Ray, over to you. Um, <laughs> you, you alt whoever's dying. <laughs> you alt. Well, basically, you alt whoever's dying, unless it's the tank. You know, Ramus, Shen, <laughs> and people that just kind of don't die anyway. So not really. But yeah, you ult, you try and ult whoever's green health bar is going down is going down the fastest or is 
at the lowest point. Um, remember to sit back. Um, flaming sword with the reckoning blast. That focus. Yeah, focus one target because if you blast them with reckoning, you get that extra damage boost to them. So try and so try and shoot one target. Um, if it's the enemy ranged carry. Um, you probably won't be getting to them because you'll have to bypass, you know, the melee front lines, and you generally do not want to venture anywhere near there, if at all possible. Um, Kale's actually fairly good at chasing and or running away, um, at the same time helping allies run away. Um, can, can she heal herself for the extra movement speed? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Um, so, yeah, if, I mean, if you're going across the map, and you have a good amount of mana, you can just heal yourself for that extra speed boost. It's always good to have. Just to bring you back to the point you mentioned before about your ultimate, is it always on whoever's going to die, like a sort of shenel, or can you use it on a cat when she's about to jump in and initiate with her ultimate, making her invincible no, for three disabled. seconds? She um, still gets stunned? Just, really? It, it, no, it does it not... Just, yeah, it does not deny, it does not cancel any sort of CC, it only makes you invulnerable to damage. Oh, yeah. what? I didn't know that. Yeah, you can still be stunned, slowed, uh, I believe silenced as well. Do you reckon that needs buffing, uh, in your opinion? Um, if they no. if they change that, that would definitely put Kale back in her you know, upper tier place, so to speak. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, it's only a but, short duration. And... Yeah, it's yeah. still fairly short. But um, you can. It's possible to throw the ult out before, um, you know, before someone gets really low. Mm -hmm. But then again, because if the person, if a champion is really high health, then the enemies just sort of split up and just focus someone else. So it kind of loses its value. Whereas yeah. if you have someone who's really low, then they have they are sort of the enemy is caught in the dilemma between staying in the fight to wait for the ult to go off so they can finish off that champion or to run away. So there's a um, it creates that sort of confusion in the enemy. Yeah, it's a bit different to Shen or because that's why the Shen or works so much is because you wait till the the enemy's so low and then you walk them and then the enemy continues to attack them because they know they might break through they might break through Shen's shield yeah, but with Kale like... it's not going to break that bubble will last so many seconds so it's not worth using another but ability still, because you know it will get pretty just much attack them. They still yeah, pretty much keep on attacking them. Yeah, but it's not quite the same. The point is, um, would it be best to use the ult when you know the most amount of damage is going to come in like if you've got an Annie and she's about to stun Tibbers is it best to use the ult just before she does that rather than letting her do it and then getting your carry away on low health it, it would it yes indeed it would be but the thing is that there are, this, there are just so few champions that really have the, that you know are going to burst um, instantly uh, Rise for instance is a good example because when he activates his ult and snares the first person, then you can ult them right away, because you know that's when all the damage is going to come. Mm -hmm. um, LeBlanc, possibly as well, because she's also a really sort of high burst champion. But other than that, you generally, champions just sort of generally do damage over time. They don't have any sort of really high burst value within a few seconds, and that's, that's why you generally save it for the last Okay, do you reckon she's more yeah. useful against those sort of champions then? There's a bit of a counter pick. Um, yeah, you can do that. Um, the thing is that with that, it takes even better timing. Um, <laughs> yeah. You can actually take Kale as a counter pick to Vagar if you know if you can get your ult off in time, which is really kind of kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so last two now, guys. Thank you for staying awake uh, this far. So, what are Kale's strengths? Um, supporting her team. Um, if we just uh, go back to the team comp real quick, um, you generally in a team of five, a uh, sort of well-rounded team. You'd have your uh, tank, Ramus, Shen, etc., Galio perhaps. Um, then you'd have your melee carry, um, who's fairly tanky as well, Irelia, Shinjal probably. And then you have your ranged carry, um, Misfortune, Ash, all that. Then you'd have a mage. Um, possibly an assassin, probably just a, probably like Morgana, for instance. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have your support, and that's the role which Kale takes, because then you have, then you're mainly looking at your mage and your range carry as the squishy ones who are the ones which you 
need to keep alive, and they are the ones who are also who can also dish out a lot of damage. Okay, so is she is she good at keeping one particular person alive, and she's good at saying that's my carrot, I'm going to sort him out and look after him, as opposed to Tarik, which has an Aurora, and Soraka, which her ultimate heals everyone. Well, yeah. It's less focused. Yeah, they're better at like protecting like the one single squishy crystal cannon that you have. I mean, yeah. What? So I was saying, I was saying, Black Tarek cannon, is go. more. He, he's got an aurora, so it's it's protecting the whole team as opposed to like one individual. And uh, Soraka's well, ultimate heals the whole team as opposed to like one individual. Whereas Kale is more focused on one person. If she, she can heal one person and get the movement speed on them, she can all one person and get the you know benefits well, of that. On she them. is really good at, at, at keeping that one person alive, but. Then all your other teammates die, or Kale dies because she's so squishy, so they just kill her. Okay, and now Plundy's favorite uh, section now. How do you. What are Kale's weaknesses? She doesn't do how, do you, how do you counter Kale? And she doesn't, and she doesn't uh, support enough. I think with the remake, they did a good. They nerfed her indirectly whenever they changed how towers took damage. Because now it's not your attack damage and your magic damage added to t- to buildings. It's just one of them. So that was a nerf to Kale because Kale was insane. She's still fairly good at pushing towers. She's still all right, but she was she was one of the best. Yeah, not as insane as before, but she's still fairly good. Anyway, um, going back to her weaknesses, Kale is as Plundy is has fervently mentioned many times. <laughs> um, very squishy. So if you can get any sort of assassin champion. Cassidin and Akali, for instance, come to mind. If you can get an assassin and get a good jump on her, you can probably, along with an ignite, um, nuke her down to the point where she has to pull back, like way back out of the fight to okay. not really be useful anymore. Cool stuff. Just to add to that, the short duration of her ultimate is a problem for Kale. If the enemy team is smart, they won't waste abilities or CC effects, which I now know is wrong, on the target no, until Kale, until Kale's paladin bubble has worn off. Uh, Kale <laughs> is good at getting an ally out of danger or herself, using her, all oh, of her abilities to last second save an ally can leave Kale most vulnerable so if she's used all her abilities saving person A, she's left herself very vulnerable because she's not got a rule or a heal to, to help herself get away from danger and that I assume, assume the cooldowns are quite long I don't think that uh, <clears throat> listing her ult as a weakness because As, not the all itself per se, the um the short duration I mean, yeah. of the ultimate. I mean, people in my people opinion. will still be attacking them though, or using CC to stop them. So it still does. Yeah, I didn't know when I read that that it. I assumed it stopped CC effects. The fact that it doesn't stop CC effects is something that needs changing, in my opinion. It's a very because short durational. Like, well, yeah, but people will still be like using their CC on the person who isn't taking any damage. So it's still pretty good in that way because yeah, when they waste yeah. it. Yeah, that, that's what I'm I mean. sure that person might die, but they've had like that extra like three seconds of your team getting to to hit the other team. Yeah, I'm not I'm not stating the effect or the paladin bubble itself. It's just its short duration. A level six is only two <laughs> seconds, which no, is no. very short in my opinion. So I, I, that's all. It I is very saying. short, but it used to be bigger, and uh, that's why they nerfed it because it was really good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so. Again, Thanks, guys, yeah. for joining, Matt. I apologise for kind of interrupting sometimes. I, you know, I was just getting—I'm getting into the flow. It should go yeah. much more smoothly. Nice, <laughs> <That's how we laughs> <laughs> and hopefully it will be a character that Plundy likes as well. So, you know, that'd I, be... I don't—I don't mind kill before we nerf the hell out of her. So, just so everybody knows I, that, I'm just playing. I'm just—I'm just messing. Back when she so, actually did something, she was really good. Thank you, Ray. Um, <laughs> I can tell that oh, you <laughs> very good player. player. Perhaps for a new opinion on uh, the on the pre- prevalent. Um... You can do it. Use <laughs> your words, dude. <laughs> Somebody well, type it for him in chat. Is what I want, is what I really want to say. She does have a. She's horrible. Role. There's she isn't horrible. There's just so many better picks. I I. I would disagree. I would disagree. I'd rather have a jam. And I'd ending jam it now. there. See you later, guys. Ta-ra. <laughs> <laughs>